When I first started this channel, my first several videos were all about Android hacking and how to do Android application security testing. I made a bunch of videos showing you how to do things like set up an Android emulator, how to access the Android file system, and how to set up an Android device to work with Burp Suite. And some of those videos are still some of the most viewed videos on my channel, even after a year and a half, almost two years. And I actually still have a playlist of those videos on my channel still, so if you're interested in any of those topics, feel free to go check them out on my channel. But one of my more popular videos that I'm still getting comments on today, more than a year and a half later, is this one where I showed how to install the Burp Suite certificate on an Android device. To briefly summarize, back in the day in the earlier versions of Android, it was very easy to just set up your Burp Suite proxy and then download the certificate onto your device and then hit a button, install it, and it was ready to go. And you could just go about intercepting traffic and testing your APIs through your Android apps. But along came Android Nougat, where they added a bunch of new security features, and one of those was that by default, the Android operating system would completely ignore all user-installed certificates. So in order to use a proxy tool like Burp Suite, you would actually have to install that certificate as a system-level cert, which requires root permissions. And there's a whole process that goes into how to set up your certificate to be a system-level cert, which I covered in that video. Unfortunately, that process can be complicated and depending on the model of your phone and different factors, there can be some problems that you run into all kinds of different roadblocks. And I'm still constantly getting comments on that video asking about what to do when I run into whatever kind of error message. But fortunately, since back when I made that video like a year and a half ago or so, there's been a new way that I've found to actually use certificates with a proxy like Burp Suite. And that process is much simpler and has much less room for those roadblocks and errors that a lot of people have been running into. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a Burp Suite certificate on an Android device the easy way. So for my example, I'm going to be using a Pixel 4a Android phone, and this is a physical device, not an emulator. And this does require the phone to be rooted and it needs to have Magisk installed. If you don't know how to root your phone or if you've never used Magisk before, I have a video I made a little while back where I showed how to root an Android phone using Magisk, and I'll have a link up here if you want to go check that out. But it is very important that you have Magisk installed because that is going to be a pretty key component of how this whole process works. In order to install a certificate without going through that whole process of making a system level certificate, we're actually going to use a Magisk module that was created by Inviso Labs. I think I'm saying that right, I really don't know. But the module is called Magisk Trust User Certs and you can find it on their GitHub. I'll have it linked down in the description if you wanna check it out. And I'm just going to click on releases and then I'm going to download this zip file. And once I have that zip file downloaded, I'm just going to use ADB to push that file to my SD card of my Android device, which is connected over USB. And alternatively, if you want to skip this step, you could just go directly to the GitHub from the web browser on the phone itself and download it straight to the device there. It's really up to you, whatever you prefer. But once I have that zip file pushed to my device, then I'm going to go to my phone and I'm going to open the Magisk app and I'm going to click on modules in the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to click install from storage. And once I look through the files on my device, I find that, that always trust user search.zip file that I just pushed to my device, and I'm going to click that. And now once that installation completes, I need to reboot. Once the phone reboots, now we see that we have that always trust user certificates listed in our modules in Magisk, and now we can try to install our Burp Suite certificate. So once I open up Burp Suite, I'm going to go to the proxy tab and click on proxy settings. And under the proxy listener, I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to set it as a specific address. And I'm going to select the IP address of my machine. In most cases, it'll probably be a 192.168 IP address. It just depends on how your network is set up. But in most cases, when you select this drop down box, you'll see 127.0.0.1 and then whatever IP address is directly underneath that is going to be the one you want to choose. And one important thing to note here is you do need to make sure that your Android device and your machine where you're running Burp Suite are on the same network and can talk to each other. One quick way to check this is just to drop into an ADB shell on your Android device and you can try to ping that IP address that you just set as your listener. And if you're able to get pings, then you're on the same network. Now we need to export our certificate, which we can do with this import export CA certificate button. We're going to export it in DER format. 
and I'm just going to name it burp.crt. It really doesn't matter what you name it, you just need to end it with the .crt extension. And now just like I did with the Magisk module earlier, I'm going to use ADB to push that .crt file to the SD card of my Android device. Once we have our .crt file pushed over to our device, we're just going to go to the settings under the security menu under encryption and credentials, install a certificate. I'm going to select CA certificate, install anyway, and then scroll through your file system until you find that .crt file that you just pushed to your device, select it, and now CA certificate installed. And if you go back and look at trusted credentials, you can look under user and now you should see a Portswigger CA listed there. But remember back at the beginning when I said that Android starting with version Nougat, which was a long time ago now, that Android no longer accepts user certificates? That means that having this Portswigger CA listed under user credentials doesn't actually do us any good. We can't actually intercept traffic with that certificate. But that's where that Magisk module comes in. Now that we have that certificate listed under our user certificates, we just need to reboot our Android. So after rebooting our phone, now we see that we still have that Portswigger CA listed under user credentials. But if we look over under system credentials, we also see that same Portswigger CA listed there as well. So now that we have our certificate installed as a system level cert, now all we need to do is set our proxy settings and start intercepting traffic. You can do that just by going under your Wi-Fi settings and looking at the network details to that specific Wi-Fi network. Under the proxy settings, select manual. And under proxy hostname, you're just going to list that IP address that you set as the listener in your burp suite settings. And the port number you're going to put as 8080, which is the default. You can change that port number if you want. Some proxy tools use 8888 or 8000 or something like that. But by default, burp suite uses 8080. Once you have those proxy settings set, you can go to a website in your web browser and you should be seeing some web traffic listed in your HTTP history and burp. So that's how you get a CA certificate installed on your Android device without having to go through all that manual work of converting a user certificate into a system level certificate. Keep in mind though, that just because you can intercept traffic with a certificate doesn't mean there won't be any other protections in place. A lot of apps will use some different sort of protection methods in order to try to prevent people from intercepting traffic with a proxy. For example, a really common thing that you might see is SSL pinning. Fortunately, I do have a few videos on my channel talking about how you can bypass SSL pinning. So if you're still having trouble intercepting traffic, check out this video and that might point you in the right direction.